welcome to Grace Church of Laverne. We're so glad you decided to join us. We hope that you'll find Grace Church to be a place where you can belong and become all that God intends for you to be. Today I'm excited to share that we have a guest speaker and a friend of Grace Church sharing with us. And Pastor Donald Rucker of the Christian Development Center in Montclair, California will be continuing our series, Psalms, The Language of Faith, by diving into the 23rd Psalm with us. And so if you'd like to welcome Donald, go ahead and throw something in the chats or the comments, and I'm sure he'll love to check that out later on. If you've been thinking about inviting someone to join you for this online experience, maybe today's the day. I, I encourage you to, to send them the link and say, hey, come and join me for this experience. And if you're doing this live stream, I would love to be able to connect with them as well. We would love to connect with you beyond this online experience. And we, we know that we were designed to live life in community and with others. And there are so many amazing ways to do that. And if you would love to know how you can get more connected at Grace, we encourage you to go to gracechurchlaverne.org slash connect, fill out a connection form, and we can tell you about upcoming small group opportunities, both in person and online, where you can get involved. We also encourage you, if you haven't already, to to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram, and no, we're not saying that because we want the likes. We're saying that because we know that community is important, and that is a place where many of us are already connecting, and why not continue to connect there with your church community? And because of that, we have created the Grace Church of Laverne uh, Facebook community group, which is linked to our page, where you can join that group and you can converse with everyone who attends Grace Church you can share prayer requests, you can share service opportunities, or just ask how people are doing. We also try to engage in different um, activities in there as well. And we're so glad you're here. We are excited for this opportunity to experience God with you. And once again, welcome to Grace. And our experience is going to begin soon. I am pumped about something that's happening at Grace. There's, there's a lot of great things happening in our church, but a very sweet, special item in our church history that's happening right now is our growing relationship with Ethel and Donald Rucker and Christian Development Center over in Montclair. We, we've been friends for a long time, and then the friendship uh, between him and me, it has morphed into friendship as a couples with Jessica and Ethel and all of us. Uh, our guys know that the men from CDC have come to some of our men's events. They've come to camp. Donald has spoken in our different settings. Uh, Brandon, actually, uh, their son-in-law, Brandon, shared a, an incredible word and testimony in one of our last gatherings. Uh, CDC guys are coming to camp with us again this year, and it's just been really fun to, to connect. And so we've decided to call our, our church friendship a, a sister church relationship. We don't really know how to formalize it, and you don't always have to formalize a friendship, but you remember when you're young, you always kind of want to know, uh, we're best friends, right? You, you, so who, who's your best friend? It's kind of a thing when you're young. You want to, you want to label it and, and call it something. And so um, CDC is a sister church to Grace, and we're a sister church to them. And Donald is actually giving up some of his time to help me as part of our preaching team here at Grace. So you're going to be hearing from him on a more, more of a regular basis. Every month or so, he's going to be in the pulpit here. And, and it's just awesome. We love them so much. And so um, I'm going to bring him up in just one second. I'm going to show, um, guys, a little video clip from the news uh, report that you sent us. So um, I think Ethel's going to talk a little bit today too, and maybe they'll tell us about an outreach that their church is doing to the homeless community in Montclair. But I, um, I had our team pull just an excerpt out of a news report because their church is getting news coverage and big time donors helping them with this ministry. So we're going to show this clip and then Donald, as soon as it's done, you're up and then you need to be brilliant and, and be funny <laughs> teach us, change our lives, and then a hard stop at 10, okay? So if I get up at 10, it's not because I'm being rude, it's because he's just going on and on and on. So, <laughs> okay, so Ethel, this will be yours. Let's run the video clip and then it's you, my friend. 
said you got to have the heart to really get involved with them and talk to them and find out. You got to listen, you know, and that's where Pastor Don and, and Ethel step in. Once a client has been selected by Gabe and Rob and placed in a hotel, then my wife and I, Ethel, we would then assess those, that client to find out what they need. We offer food and clothing giveaway once a month to the homeless and those that are in need. We offer resources. We connect them if they need health services, financial assistance. We walk them through that process. Life skills, we offer those kind of services. So that's when we ended up partnering up with the Christian Development Center. They're going to be the ones that are monitoring and providing the counseling and the resources and basically helping them, making sure that they're staying on task. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord another big round of applause for that, amen. Amen. Yeah. Our God is awesome. Amen. Y'all forgive me, I got to get my stuff together. I only got it 15 minutes. See, it's hard when you put a, you know, I got some Baptist roots in me. So praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to hurry up. But before I do anything, give it up for Pastor Isaiah. Didn't he do a great job last week? Amen. He did an awesome job presenting the word. Amen. It was really good. Pastor Isaiah, I don't know if you're still in here, but I failed every one of those tests. You know, I didn't know none of those songs. Amen. So next time you're going to have to bring some temptation commodores. Amen, amen. While we are, I'm trying to get things together, I'm going to bring my girlfriend up here, amen, for the last 38 years. That's my girl right there. Yeah. That's, that's my girl. You can come up. Uh, okay, come on. Uh, come on up, babe. Yeah. Thank you. Right here. Greetings, family. <laughs> Turn and look at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad that we're in the house of the Lord. Because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go go into the house of the Lord. Isn't it a blessing now that we can come together? It's nothing like touching each other and kissing each other and holding each other's hands. Nothing like that fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing yes. over at... Uh, this started, we approached our, our uh, mayor, and we we're asking him how we can come alongside him and assist him in what he was doing. And he said homelessness. So we brought ourselves together. We had meetings and everything like that. Then it continued to evolve. Then they brought trailers. And with the trailers, what we do is we get people that are off the streets that may not know how to budget and get themselves together. We put them into a trailer first. We give them a year there to be able to get themselves together. We assist them with life skills and things like that. Amen. Budgeting finances, right? Then from there, we move them into permanent housing. Right now, we're in a project. The city is looking to purchase some land Somebody. so they can do this mental health kind of facility with tiny houses around it. We will offer case man management services and things like that. Amen. It's just awesome to watch what God is doing when he can have willing vessels. Amen. All he needs is willing vessels. Vessels, people that will bring their hand, their intellect, their intellectual property, their love, their compassion. We were given an award about a month ago from the city, and what they said that touched me, out of all the things the mayor said, he said this. He said, we work with a lot of organizations, but when we see you and Donald, yeah. we see the love of Jesus. See, a lot of people do it for the name of recognition, things like that. But when you're just doing as unto the Lord, he's the one that's being lifted up and glorified. For that, Pastor and I are so eternally grateful. Yes, we are. So that's pretty much it. We just continue to move with God, Amen. bless people, help people. We were on a, a conference call last week with about 40 organizations, Catholic Church, all the big heads of those organizations. When they played the, the um, script, yeah, yeah. I began to weep because it's like, Lord, we're actually making a difference in people's lives. Amen. We're not just coming to church every Sunday and sitting on the pews, but we're out there in the grind, yeah. helping to move a family, a single mom, an elderly person into stable housing where they Amen. can get the assistance and love that they need. We give you honor for partnering. As we can partner with you, Father, Amen. it's an awesome privilege, and Pastor and I are grateful for that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Good job. All right. 
Okay, open up your ears to hear from this man of God that I've had the privilege to walk alongside for 38 years. I'm grateful to God for all that he's doing. I'm grateful to our sistership and our fellowship. I know God is up to something. Say God is up to something. Yes, he is. He's up to something because it's about the body of Christ, bringing people together. I've always seen God as being an inclusive God. A diverse God. Amen. It's like a bouquet. When God looks at us, he looks at a bouquet of flowers or different fra fragrances and different shapes and sizes. And when we come together, we just bless one another. Amen? Amen? Amen. So open your ears and receive from this mighty, awesome, amazing, studious, learner, teacher, and anointed man of God. Amen? How much is this going to cost me? I got to pay her. Amen, amen. Isn't that awesome? I don't think you can count that against my time. <laughs> Somebody said, praise the Lord. <laughs> to my church family members, amen. Good to see you, CDC. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Y'all came to learn today? How many of you came to learn today? Amen, amen. Well, let's jump into this. Well, Father, we've already talked about this. And so what we want to do now is just sink our hearts and minds. Let the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight so that you can flow by way of your spirit and you can open up and reveal the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, so that we can be in alignment and in agreement with what you're doing in these last days and times. And we're grateful that you allowed us to partner with you, to come alongside of you, to accomplish your predetermined will. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to ask you to go to Psalms 23, amen, since we're talking about the language of faith, amen. Psalms 23 really speaks in line with that. David was a fascinating man. Amen. Long before he became king, David had a confidence and a desire to please God. And in Psalms 23, David teaches us some things in order for us to walk in God's very best and to accomplish what he has already predetermined now. I know people say God is making you doing a new thing. Well, that just doesn't line up with theology. He's already done what he's going to do. He's already planned what he's planned. He just need us to walk into alignment and into agreement with what he's already done. And I can see that in Psalms 23. Amen. So if you're there, let's just read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the, I mean, yet he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me and console me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed and refresh my head with oil, my cup overflow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give the Lord a big round of applause for, for you know. yeah. I want to say I love you man but I want to share this with you and you can uh, judge it God says, I set a door before you, a door of opportunity. Don't be afraid to seize the moment, for I'm with you. As I promised you in times past, I will watch over and protect you. So this opportunity, yes, yeah, of me. Just walk through it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna leave you with this thought this morning if I can since we're talking about the language of faith. I believe faith has a voice. Amen. 
And so I want to leave you with this thought, giving voice to your faith. That's what David did. And if you can give me a few moments, amen, I promise I'll do my very best to be out by 1030. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. 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 So David teaches us now that in walking with God, you also have to give voice to what God has said unto you and, to his, and through his word. Amen. So I want to share some of those things because I believe that the faith factor is critical in our spiritual development. Now, when I talk about faith, I'm not talking about a name and then claim it. I'm talking about a dependency, a reliance, an absolute dependency on God as our source with no options. Somebody say amen. Nudge the neighbor next to you say you might as well get with him because he's going somewhere. <laughs> amen. 16 years ago, the Lord asked me to leave a lucrative job. Hmm. Still having flashbacks. <laughs> and he said to me, I'm going to teach you how to trust me at a level. And I'm going to prove to you I can take better care of you than you could with the job. Now, keep in mind, he gave me the job. But there were some things now, when you walk with God, you're going to have to decide to divorce yourself of your feelings, of your sensory perception, because we serve an invisible God. Amen? And he, contrary to popular belief, do not move by feelings or need. If that was the case, he would take care of every need. Amen? And if he was moving by feelings, there would be no feelings. Somebody say amen. amen. So go to Habakkuk real quickly, because I only, only have about 10 more minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2, real quickly. Look at verse 4. <clears throat> and I want to deal with the latter. It says, Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous shall what? Shall what? Live by faith. Jump over to Romans chapter 1 real quickly. Amen. I want to establish in your heart from the word of God that we have to give voice to our faith. Amen. That you have to come into alignment, into agreement with kingdom. How the kingdom operates in the kingdom of God, the currency of the kingdom of God is our faith our trust, our dependency in this mighty God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, quickly. Nudge your neighbor again and say, yes, stay with him. He's going somewhere. For in it, verse 17, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written in the just shall live by faith. Look at your neighbor and say, you're talking about me right now. <laughs> yes, he is. You are the just. Look at Galatians 3, 11, real quickly. Amen. Hurry up, because I got somewhere to go. Come on, come on. Amen. Galatians 3. Are you there? Verse 11. Now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident, for the righteous shall what? Live by what? Now keep in mind the word pistis means a dependency on God. A reliance on him. And David clearly shows us this in Psalms 23. That he had absolute dependency on God. And we need to be there today. We need to be anchored in God. That God is reliable. He's faithful. Amen. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 10 real quickly. Amen. Now, I know I'm giving you a lot of passages, but I want your faith to be resting in God's word and not just in my ability to articulate. Look at the Hebrews 10, 38. Amen, amen. Are you there? Look at verse 37. For yea, in a very little while, for he who is coming will come and we, it will not delay, but the righteous, the just, say what? And living by faith means I have to give voice to my faith. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Now that your neighbor say he's talking about you right now. 
Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Amen. So faith, Paul now comes and gives us an understanding of the systematic process of faith in Romans 3 when it says faith is a law. But faith has a, faith has a voice. It has a voice. And what we need to do, if we're going to move the, the thermometer of America back to the center of our God, you and I as believers have to speak up and say, what thus said the Lord, hallelujah. I'm too excited. So let me get into this. Are you ready for this? So David shows us now, go back to Psalms 23. Amen. I, I, I think I'm doing okay on my time. Praise the Lord. Psalms 23, he says something that's powerful. David makes declaration. Now, Psalms 23 is six verses of power. Only six verses of powerful declaration about God. And how David, now catch this, how David viewed God. This is his perception of him. And you and I need to catch that same perception so that we can move mountains for our king. Somebody say amen. So he says this. He says this. The Lord is my shepherd. Now I want you to focus on that first, the first two words. The Lord. Nudge your neighbor say he's talking to you right now. It's all right. He said the Lord. Now when David says the Lord, he is declaring God's sovereignty. Now, let me help you with that. God's sovereignty means that God, governmental rule and reign over your life. Somebody say amen. All right, I got to get some help. I told you I got Baptist roots. So it means governmental rule and reign over your life. So point to, your, point to yourself and say, yeah, he's talking about me right now. Now, so if you have a problem with big government, you got a problem with the king in his kingdom. Go ahead and say amen. I know you didn't see that coming. <laughs> no, if you have a problem with big government, government in your business, government getting into everything, you're going to have a problem with God as your sovereign. Somebody say amen. Because there is no privacy in the kingdom. You know, they tell me you have to let stuff like that marinate, like good meat. <laughs> got to get into the bones. Yeah, see, there's got Jesus not only brought redemption for us, he brought a government. With rules and regulations and policies, laws that you and I have to adhere, align, and agree with. David, now, when he says, the Lord, he wasn't just speaking of God as his Savior. And when you do, do study, when you really do the study and look at what the Scripture says, Jesus does not just offer himself as Savior, he offers himself as Lord. And the Lordship of Jesus comes first, now, before Savior. In other words, he invites you into his kingdom because you didn't choose him. Go ahead and say Amen. It's all right. Say amen. Nobody know that. If you, if, if you say amen, nobody know I'm talking about you. <laughs> so that's what David mean when he said the Lord is. He's my sovereign. Now keep in mind, David is king. And yet he brings himself under the governmental rule and reign of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God taught me this principle. Because I came into the kingdom with the mindset that I can do what I want. And tell Jesus to follow me. Don't look at me like that. I'm better. <laughs> I, I got the revelation now. That's not how it works in the kingdom. When you made him and declared him Lord, you are saying I'm coming under your governmental rule and reign. For my life. I hope y'all ready for this. I hope you're ready for this. I hope you're ready. There's no democracy in the kingdom. God don't take sides. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't know if they like that one. 
said, David said, he's my what? Sovereign. Then he said this, he's my shepherd. Oh, wait a minute. He didn't say that the Lord is a shepherd. David got personal with it. He says, he is my shepherd. Look at your neighbor and say, is he your shepherd? Because God depicts himself throughout scripture as the shepherd of Israel. And guess how he describes you and I? Sheep. God knows something about us that we don't want to admit to. If you understand anything about sheep, they're stubborn. They wander off. They get into trouble. They complain all the time. Say, not me, pastor, not me, pastor. But David says, he declared, he gives voice to his faith, his trust, his reliance, his dependency in God by saying, you are my shepherd. And what that means for me now, that there's a relationship that God wants with his sheep. There's an intimacy that he wants with his sheep. And if you understand anything about shepherd and sheep, the shepherd used to, to, would sleep with the sheep. They got intimate with the sheep. Because why? The sheep don't know what's good for them. And oh my God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ don't know what's good for us. That's why he must become sovereign. He must become our shepherd. So that we are not distracted with all of the chaos and confusion that's in the world system. Somebody say amen. amen. I think I just felt, felt my help come on now. It's a relationship. And what I've learned is God is attentive. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the Lord's ears attentive, is bent toward the righteous. God is so attentive to you that he took time out to count the very strains of hair on your head. He don't have that much count anymore for me, but <laughs> I lost some. And I've been asking him, can you, can you give me back my hair? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's attentive. Is this making sense to anybody? And this is what I love about him because he, he's so relational. He's not religious, he's relational. He's not religious, he's relational. That he knows us by name. It is said that shepherds would name their sheep. Now catch this. Not only did the shepherd name them. Oh, you got to get this. The shepherd trained the sheep to distinguish their voice. Because during this day and time, there was not much watering grass in Israel. So there would be thousands of sheep competing for grass and water. And the shepherds, would, they would kind of like congregate together. And the shepherds had to train, catch this, train the sheep to know their voice so that when the shepherd calls, the sheep can follow Oh, where's the force of God in our life today? Uh, have we forgotten that he still is alive and he's still talking? Now, there is the logos of God's word, the written, the 66 book. But there's a rainbow. There's the specific, spec, uh, specifications of God. Where God speaks specifically to you about his objectives, his plans, his agendas for your life. And if you can't hear him, how are you going to follow him? Now they tell me now that what shepherds would do to train sheep is that men would break the, their front legs and let them in. And in the process of that, they would get the sheep used to their voice and their care. Because after all, you know, sheep wander off. Say amen. <laughs> sheep get into trouble. Sheep make unwise decisions. Are you listening? So the shepherd would break their legs and then let them in. And after the mending, the sheep now is so attentive to the shepherd's direction for their life. Somebody say amen. amen. See, that's what God did for me. Not that he broke my legs. He's not a horrible God. But God let you get into situations. 
are you listening? He lets you get into situations. And he did that for me. So that he could reveal himself. So I can sink my heart, my decision making, my judgments with his. So that now when he says, Donald, move, and I don't have full disclosure, I can follow him. You saw that clipping? That's all him. I didn't plan that. That's all his doing. He orchestrating because he already know, oh, good Lord, what he want to do. Nudge your neighbor, say, are you still with him? Says sovereign. Shepherd. So with the shepherd sheep, there's a relationship. I thought he is Abba. What the church needs to know, why you don't know your father's voice? Jesus is not dead. He is alive forevermore. And as he directed Peter and Paul, James and uh, the church fathers, guess what? He's still leading us by the Holy Ghost, for he will lead you into all truths. I wish I had an excited church. <laughs> also, also, whew, good Lord. There's the relationship. This is what I love. This is what I love. This is what I love. Then there's God's responsibility to the sheep. See, God is obligated to me. Look at your neighbor and say, me too, me too. No, he, he's obligated. After all, I didn't choose him, he chose me. So he becomes responsible for me. And that's what David declares. He leadeth me beside still waters. He causes me to lay down in green power. God is responsible for us. That means he's our provider. He's our source, not our jobs, not our businesses, not our careers, not our investments, not, our, not the government of America. He, he alone is our source. All he needs for you and I is to depend on him. He's the same. He has not changed. As he was in old, he's still doing the same thing. He just need a people that will fall on him and depend on him, trust him in, in every given turn. That's all he needs. You talk about seeing the miracles. You say you believe in the miracles. God is still working miracles. He's still parting the Red Sea. He's still hitting the rock and water flows from it. He's our way maker, our promise keeper. Boy, I'm getting too excited. And they said, someone said, why is he screaming? We can, we can hear him. I told you I got Baptist roots. But let me tell you really why, because, you know, you got to know my story to appreciate my screen. You got to know where I came from. And for the God of the heavens and earth to grace me to stand before his beautiful people. <laughs> I am privileged. You better believe I'm going to make some noise. <laughs> Somebody say amen. So with his responsibility, let me wind up. He's my provider. David says this, I shall not want. I shall not want. Why? It's the shepherd's responsibility to care for me. The sheep don't take care of the shepherd. The shepherd takes care of the sheep. Every need should be met mentally, emotionally, Financially, spiritually, relationship-wise in your life, I shall not want. Why? Because God satisfied me. David declared it like this. My cup overrun it. <laughs> oh, my God. Nobody happy, Lord, but me. <laughs> then he's our protector. Hmm. I wonder if we really believe that. A virus shut us down. I know you didn't see that coming, did you? Nudge your neighbor and say, no, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> the Bible tells me, and I, I'm running out of time. I, I thought I was going to get through with this, but you guys didn't help me out that much. <laughs> I forgive you, though. But I'm coming back. 
The Bible tells me that when judgment was on Egypt, which is a type and symbol of the world, that Gosha thrived. That the children of Israel had none of the plagues. I'm still a firm believer that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say he is my refuge. He's a protector. Can he not protect us from a virus? Can he not cover us? Can he not immune us from the deadly pestilence that fly by night? He's our protector. After all, he called us to push his agenda, to push his will, his word and his way into this world. Can he not protect us? David found him to be a protector so that when David faced Goliath, <laughs> as a young boy, David like, I don't know why all you guys are afraid of this uncircumcised Philistine. That just like God was with me with the bear and the lion, I'm going to cut this dude's head off today. Why? Because God's a protector. Listen, church. They tell, tell me that the surge is coming again. Hey, in L.A. County, they're already mandating mass again. That's the world. We live in the kingdom. Either we believe he's a protector or we don't. But he is. He can protect us, especially when we push in his agenda. I'm closing. The Apostle Paul says this. Amen. He says, we are ambassadors of God. If you know anything about ambassadors, they go to a foreign land, right? And they represent the interests of their country. America's always sending ambassadors, right, to foreign land to represent America's interests. Well, God has released you and I into foreign land to represent his interests. And long as we're on foreign land, he is our great protector. He's our provider. He's our sovereign. He's our shepherd. And that's why David closed and said, do I walk? Oh, boy, I felt a little preach there. Did you get that, Joe? Did you hear that, man? I, I felt that preach. Do I walk through the valley? I will not fear. Amen? Amen. So ask yourself, is he your sovereign? Is he really your shepherd? Because that's what he wants. So that he can navigate you through this foreign land. And that you and I can make the impact that he's called us to make. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this? If you did, come on and give the Lord a big round of applause. Hey. Wow. Amen.